All right, welcome back, everybody. Uh, today, I'm excited to share an update of my Gaussian splatting particle system uh, component. And this one is going to be all in POPs. So POPs, if you haven't heard, are a phenomenal new operator family in Touch Designer. Not going to get too much into the functionality of those right now, but I do want to go through kind of how to use my component and a couple of the key differences between this one and the component that is uh, made for the older builds, which I've released a couple other videos on. So check those out. This is going to focus mostly on the differences and using this component. So a lot of things are the same. You have kind of very similar uh, functionality for the splat itself. We do have a bounding sphere, sphere radius. And the one thing I want to note there is you do need to reset the feedback loop every time you change the bounding sphere radius. And this is because I do it before the feedback loop so that we don't have uh, to do any unnecessary computation on the particles. So we also have a camera, which you can change and move around as before. That's all pretty similar. Um, a couple things that I'm quite excited about are the pop specific functionality that we have. So for example, I have uh, an input here where you can input some automatons. And if we turn the zap radius up, then we can actually use these automatons to dissolve our splat. And I think this is a really phenomenal use case for pops. And it's something that would really not be possible in the old paradigm. So one other thing that I want to mention here is, OK, so we can reset. We see that, OK, as these automatons are getting close to the system, they begin to dissolve. And that dissolving kind of propagates across. Um, one cool thing that Pops also lets us do is use a very easy built-in operator to render this really cool plexus. Uh, and I have it set up so that the plexus only renders when the splats kind of dissolve. And so if we drop the seek home weight, we can see uh, the kind of the plexus begins to expand as the splats move further away from their home. And if we get kind of crazy and really like kick up the amplitude, turn up the speed, start to see some, some interesting behavior. And of course, we can turn up the seek home weight and everything returns. We can also turn the rendering for the splats off so that we only get the kind of plexus version of the particle system, uh, which I think is pretty cool. And uh, that probably sums up my favorite attributes of this new component. A couple other things to note due to limitations in the POPs experimental build, uh, there's no velocity or depth output at this time for these guys. I'll add that, of course, once we are able to do so with the functionality. And one other thing that I forgot to mention is that in this case, I'm going to turn the zapping off. But in this case, I also was able to add two things. One is touch designer lighting. So now we can use uh, lights and touch designer. Boom. And as we move them around, their impact on the splat scene, as you can see, is updated. Uh, so that's pretty cool. It means that we can use things like lights and ambient lights to light our scene. And that is, I think, something that is pretty powerful because then, of course, these can be animated. Uh, maybe it needs to be animated more than that. It can be animated. Uh, and we can see that effect in our splats. Shout out to Ben Heim for giving me the idea to do that. And uh, OK, so the other thing. We have some built-in stuff. We can change like the diffuse and ambient coloring of our uh, splats, change the specularity, have some interesting controls there to make the scenes more ethereal. And then we have a saturation multiplier, uh, which you can't see right now. But if you turn color correction on, then you can. So this color correction tab actually gives you the entire range Oops. OK, here we go. The entire range of color correction that we're used to in a level top. And we can apply this to the Gaussian splats. So not only can we change the brightness, increase the brightness. Um, as you can see, that's done real time in the render. We can shift the hue, which is 
there, but I have it uh, very light. You can see it a lot more this way. I think that's a pretty cool effect. Um, we can shift the gamma, adjust the contrast, and maybe my personal favorite is this temperature adjustment where we can just change the temperature of the whole thing and I think it's pretty cool to be able to combine this like temperature and hue adjustment and then maybe bring the gamma like up or down a little bit, turn the saturation down just maybe ever so slightly. We'll turn on this TD lighting. Uh, let's make the light maybe a little bit more dim and we'll put it on an LFO with an amplitude of 10. This will be the TX and Boom. Okay, maybe more of an amplitude of like 101, and we'll turn the frequency down. And so now we have this nicely animated lighting that's moving around in our system. All of this is getting integrated in real time. So as we move the camera, everything stays correct. And um, then we can start to have some fun. So we can say, let's render the plexus. Let's start to zap our system. And then all of a sudden, we have this pretty cool effect. Uh, which we completed from scratch in just a few clicks using this component. So hopefully that goes to illustrate a little bit of the value of this component, and I'm excited to see what everybody can create with it. There's going to be a lot more coming on this one because pops are experimental, and I'm learning more every day about them. I think everybody is at this stage. So I will be adding functionality as we get new functionality, and also as I discover uh, more functionality that already exists. So I'll be excited to keep uh, updating everyone as we go. Thank you for your support, as always, and I'm excited to see what you create with us.